Praying Tuesday. And we're still on the theme of prayer. This morning, our hearts cry out to the Lord. Psalm 17, verse 6. We call on you, O God, because you will answer us. Please listen closely to us and hear what we say. And this is what the Lord says in Mark 11, verse 24. This is how God answers us this morning. Therefore, I tell you, my children, all the things you're praying for and asking for, just believe. Just believe. God is saying, believe that you have received it and you will have it. Over to you, Dr. Kessis. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, my sister. And I want to thank God this morning for everyone who is here. I see again that we are doing very well in our attendance uh, on that Zoom flat platform and I believe the other platforms. Now, I would like us to share in a message titled, What Do You Do After Prayer? What do you do after prayer? And this is the first part. And when we meet in the next session, we will have the second part. What do you do after prayer? Father in heaven, make this message simple and clear to all of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You see, friends, before prayer, we urge you to pray. Before prayer, we urge you to pray. Because when you pray, there is peace and there is a God who responds. So before prayer, we urge you that please pray. Before you pray, that's what we do. And during prayer, you are supposed to believe. During prayer, you express yourself. During prayer, you approach the throne of God with confidence. You hide nothing from God during prayer. You confess your sins during prayer. You explain your fears to God and your worries, you explain them to God. You literally pour out your heart to our caring God. That's what you do during prayer. And before prayer, we are supposed to pray. But during prayer, we are supposed to trust God that he is going to answer our prayer and we should be able to open up to God when we are praying. But the question this morning is, what do you do after prayers? That's very critical. What do you do after prayers? You see, some people have said that you remain on your knees or whatever prayer position for a while as you wait for God to answer, because it has been claimed that maybe some people rush out of that prayer moment and before God responds, they are gone. But my understanding of God is a little different. I don't think God, when you kneel down and wait for a few minutes, that will, that's when God whispers an answer and say, hey, this is my answer. No. The reason why we don't rush from our knees, the reason why we don't rush from the prayer position is not because we are waiting for an answer, but because it is reverent. It, it is a sign of reverent to remain for a moment and then we move on after prayer. Otherwise, prayer is not the presence of God because our God is omnipresent. You can't get away from the presence of God. You need to ask the psalmist in Psalm 137, 139, verse 7 and 8, where he, he says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Because he says, if I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. And so he says, you cannot run away from the presence of God. So when you finish praying, whether you are kneeling, standing, sleeping, or whatever position, you have not left the presence of God. We are ever in the presence of God. The reason why we pause after prayer is just a sign of reverence, but not because we are waiting for an answer. 
We pause for that moment. But the question is, what do you do after prayer? I want us to see what one woman did and remembering that this month in South Africa, we are focusing on women that God created and placed here on earth. I want us to do to see what one woman did after prayer. This woman is by the name Anna. She had not gotten a child and had prayed and prayed for a child. And one day while she was praying in the temple, Eli was listening to the prayer and, and, and told the woman something in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. The Bible says that Eli answered and told her that go in peace. Eli answered and said, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Remember, during the prayer, she was very frustrated. During the prayer, she was crying. During the prayer, she seemed to have been struggling a lot with the burden that was in her heart. But now the Bible says that when she left, her face was no longer downcast because Eli had said, go in peace. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, after prayer, Anna went home in peace. And so this is the message for you today. After prayer, go in peace. After prayer, you can't continue crying the way you are crying before prayer and during prayer. You go in peace. Because that is a demonstration of faith in the God that you just prayed to. After prayer, go in peace. You can no longer cry the same way. You can no longer worry the same way because you have put the matter squarely in the desk, on the desk of a God who is able. You have put it in the hands of God who is able to deal with the issues correctly. After prayer, go in peace. What do you do after prayer? Go in peace. After, after talking to our loving God, go in peace. After presenting your requests and anxieties to God, go in peace. The point is go in peace. What do you do after prayer? After prayer, you go in peace. The one you have just spoken to during prayer is loving, is caring, is all wise, cannot make a mistake. No good thing will he deny us. The Bible says in Psalm 84, verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor and no good thing does he withhold from those who walk blamelessly. And so God will not withhold anything that is good for me. And so after prayer, I go in peace. I don't go worrying that maybe God may deny me this, yet I really want it. God knows what is good for us, and he will not deny us any good thing. No good thing will he deny us. And since you know that, then after prayer, you go in peace. You know he cannot make a mistake and give you the wrong thing or deny you the right thing. After prayer, you go in peace. You know he is loving. So after prayer, you go in peace. You know he is caring. So after prayer, you go in peace. Go in peace because nothing is impossible with our God. So after prayer, you go in peace. Go in peace. Because if God doesn't grant your request, it is in your best interest, even if you do not see it now. So after prayer, go in peace. Because if he grants it, then it is right for you. If he doesn't grant it, it means it was not right for you. After prayer, go in peace. Go in peace because God is never late. Even if our perception tells us that we are running out of time, God does not run out of time. He stopped the sun two times. He delayed the time. He came four days 
after Lazarus was buried and still fixed the problem because God is never late and God is not time bound. So after prayer, do not worry about time. After prayer, do not use the human perception that we are running out of time, things are out of hand because that is human. But now you have placed things in the hand of God. After prayer, go in peace. After prayer, go in peace. So what do you do after prayer? This is the question today. After prayers, you go in peace. If you do not go in peace, then you are praying to the wrong God. That's what I will tell you. If you don't go in peace, you are praying to the wrong God. Or you do not know and trust the God you just prayed to. That's why you didn't go in peace. In fact, lack of peace after prayer says more about the God you worship, says more about your faith in God than anything else will ever say. If you pray and trust God, then like Anna, you will go in peace. You will not worry anymore. You will not be downcast anymore. You will go home excited as if you are already expectant and you are praying for a child. After prayer, you are told, go in peace. And you go home with the joy of an expectant woman who was waiting for a child. That is faith in God. So if you have been praying to the wrong God who you cry before prayer, you cry during prayer, and after prayer you are still crying, then you need to find a good God, the God of the Bible, the God that we believe in. May God help our unbelief so that we may go in peace. What do you do after prayers? You go in peace. You see, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 6, verse 7, in that text that talks about anxiety and prayer, it says, do not be anxious about anything. You know, we get so anxious, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You see, present what makes you anxious, present what all these things that trouble you and worry you, and even things that don't worry you. And then he says in verse 7, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There is a peace after prayer. Do not be anxious, but present your request to God. And immediately after presenting your request to God, we are told that, and the peace of God, that means after prayer, there is a peace. If after prayer, you don't experience peace, then you are praying to the wrong God then you don't have faith in the God that you are praying to. What did I come to tell you, my brothers and sisters? Peace is promised after prayers. What do you do after prayers? After prayers, you go in peace. May God grant us peace today as we pray. And after the prayers today, may we go in peace, excited and happy, because the matter is now in the right hands. After prayer, Go in peace. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, it's the blessed hour of prayer when our hearts slowly bend as we gather to Jesus, our Savior and friend. We know that with a sympathizing heart, you are going to listen and handle all our matters because you care, because you are loving, because you are capable, because you are never late, because you never delay. We believe the matters are in the right hands. May peace be ours after prayer, not just today, but always. And may this be our demonstration of faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.